Okay, gearheads, Chuck Fast here, and we're getting back after this 35th anniversary Camaro, and uh, we're going after the number five fuel injector, working on that dreaded 305 trouble code, the P0305. Looking in here, it looks a little bit daunting. Of course, it's the one way back, the furthest back. And I'm thinking the best way to get at this thing is going to have to remove this coil pack. And I see a couple bolts here. So I've got nothing to go by. Got into the books. I can't find anything that tells me much about working on these Camaros. So we're going to get back in here and just go at it step by step and see what happens. So I'm just using a what I had handy here is a half inch deep socket. <clears throat> get these loose. I think they're like a 12 or something. I'm not really into metrics. Old school. But, uh, so, cuz Ricky Ray is up at the Roaster Show and I get to be here and do this. That is what it is. Okay. But she's got a rough idle, misfire, and we've already tried a couple of things. Okay, it's just gonna come off of here. Put that one in there. I don't know what it. I don't know how to. I don't know what all goes this on. Doesn't seem to want to slide off. Well, we're gonna work on this. There's the culprit and try to get that out of there. What's up, keeper? All right, gearheads. Sure enough, we have a bolt in here. So I've uh, busted out the number 12 wrench here. A little bracket bolt up front of this thing. Got to snake my fingers in there to get at it. So. It's a good long bolt, too. I've been turning this thing for quite a while. To the point that it's hurting my fingers. All right. Oh, man. Just not a lot of room here. Just not a lot of room. All right. Here's the other bolt. Is that one longer than the others? Well, the others are nuts. <laughs> What can we do here? Uh, here it comes off the studs. It is loose. Now, can I get it out between all these fuel lines? Uh, all the other plug wires are going to hold it on. Uh, what the heck with it? Let's just pull them loose. Uh, uh. All right, here it comes. Oh, of course there's a bunch of wiring. Uh, I'll have to figure out how to get that loose. All right, we'll show you this in a second. Let's see, what do we got here? Boy, I can't tell how that's in. In back there. We gotta figure out how this is held in in the back. Okay, it was so corroded it's hard to tell. I shoved it back down in there. But anyway, it's right in the middle, in the back, and it's, I'm using my little handy-dandy socket set with a number seven here. And uh, there's the coils. They're numbered across the top. All right. And you can see here, it says two and five, six and three, four and seven. I've reversed the two coils these two. Okay, so we'll show you this in a little more detail. Taking off the second nut. Here's the next nut here, number 10. So we got the two off this side. Let's see if anything will move. Trying to move this fuel line enough to 
evidently it clamps down tight and holds the injectors in place. And uh, I was hoping maybe I could work on this side and, and uh, loosen the pressure and get it out of there, but <laughs> no way, it's not going anywhere. All right, so we've got some wires and things we've got to get out of the way. Uh, we've got a clamp right in here. Sorry, but I have to get this light in here. All right. We've got this wiring loom. I've moved it out of the way. That's good. Okay. So, I'm afraid I'm going to have to go around to the other side and take hold down nuts loose over there too. Alright guys, so I was able to get to the two nuts on the other side over here. They came out, you know, I had to struggle with the back one. On that side I ended up using, if you have a short extension like this with your tin, that's what it took to get it out. And sure enough, now that fuel rail is loose and it's coming up and the injectors are pulling out. And now I need to get the injector unattached from the rail which I don't even know how to do. I don't have any special tools. I don't have things like Noid lights and all that. But for one thing, that number five back there, I can't see it. I ended up having to pull this thing out of there. You use the uh, needle nose and get in there. I couldn't tell which way these things, they, you have to compress them this way on the underside of the hole. So if they're, it's lengthwise with the, that's how it's done when it's inside the car, just so you know. And. Uh, yeah, just so I can see better, so I can see down in here. And uh, there's a like a wire clamp, I'm not sure how it works, that uh, holds it onto the rail, and then also there's a real small clip that holds the wire connector onto the top. And we're going to try to figure out how to do that. So, there we are. There's our connector. There's a coil with the bolt in the middle of it. And here's our two studs that held that coil block on there. And can we see it right there? Okay, that's the number five injector. So, I get down here. I can lift that up. Injector comes out. It's already out of its hole, so we just need to get the rest unhooked. Let's see what we can do. Love you, bitch. Okay, tubers, look what we have here. I've been trying to figure out how this clip hooks, how the injector is hooked in there. So I had to finally figure that out. It turns out it's a little clip that slides in. And it slides in from this way, or no, it slides in from the back side, the engine side, up this way. So what you had to do, get in there with some screwdrivers and my fingers, and open these up. Push these open a little bit, and then they slide out. They slide out from around this. So, uh, so I had to fish this out, had to fish this out, because this goes, well, it goes on the, I don't know if I can leave it in here now to put it on the other end. And that, you just simply grab the back side of it and clamp it together and you can lift the connector out. So yeah, it was hard to see. I had to do it by feel because there's a tab down in there that gets in the way and you can't see. I had several things working against me, not the least of which is age, which includes my eyes, my knees, my wrists, my back, working on a low slung car like this has been hell on it. So, here it is. A little bit of fuel. So what now? What kind of a backyard fix can we do on this thing? We'll have to see. Okay guys, here's the setup. I've just looked around and all through my junk and uh, here's the uh, mass airflow cleaner I'm going to use. This is just a cap off of a differential lube that would cap off your bottle that you buy. You guys have all done that, right? 
And uh, this here, I just found something. This is an old broken off piece from a heater core, stupid plastic heater core that they break like this with some of the GM products. What I'm going to try to do, okay, I've got two clamps hooked on here, and so I've got my battery for my 12 volts. I hope 12 volts is right. And uh, I'm just going to shove this in here and try to do this all at once and see what happens. Let's try this. I wonder if I can get that in there. Uh, all right. All right, let's see here. Oh, kicking back. Kicking back on me. Okay, there we go. We got a, like one, one fine spray coming out. That's not right, is it? I don't think that's right. Let's try it again. Okay guys, I was able to grab number three injector without too much trouble. There's my thumb in a small screwdriver. So now that I learned the hang of it. Now I notice here it says 253-23972, 5181C, it also says C4B, whatever those, whatever that means. This thing looks pretty original to me. Alright, so there's number five set aside. Let's see what we can do here. Kind of looks the same to me. It's coming out of there the same. Same stream coming out of there. Oh boy. All right, so next we figure out what we're going to do next. Okay, here we go now. Lost another damn socket down in here. God, I hate working on these cars. What I've done is I've put switched the two injectors, put them back in. And uh, those clips, let me tell you, they were hard enough to get out. Putting them back in, trying to get in behind to shove the clips in, couldn't do it. So I ended up shoving the two clips in from this side. I've got them in, I've got it bolted back down now. This here is part of my earlier troubleshooting. Tried some of the old school troubleshooting. Took two of the coils off and uh, tested them and they seemed like the ohms were okay but I don't know exactly what the specs are on them but uh, I switched them around to see if it changed the uh, code from 305 to uh, 303 and uh, it didn't I also switched around the spark plugs what I finally did was I used my little well pe some people can buy those infrared heat sensors I used my old NASCAR one has a probe on it. We used to check tire temps with it and uh, that back cylinder was running at least 20 degrees cooler than the others. And that's when I started doing this. And that's when I decided time to pull the injector out. The injector which I was thinking about the most in the very beginning. So I will take and change these back to where they were Just so that they are correct, Amundo. Then I'll get down in here and change those two spark plug wires back around. The spark plug boots have dots on the top. Somebody had put some dots on the top to correspond with the numbers where they go. Yeah, I'm glad they did that. that back in. Alrighty then, I decided to pull the plug out of number three. Hopefully you can see this pretty good. 
the porcelain insulator is white all the way down just like number five was when I checked it before pretty lean it's just a little bit of uh, brownness right there at the edge of the insulator but these run sixty thousands got a big long insulator going down inside but that's the way they are this thing looks almost new sure looks lean to me but it is what it is I guess here's what we have for a reading So that was two of eight frames.